Welcome to Ace Linguistics. This channel is about all things linguistic, discussing topics in phonetics, phonology, morphology, syntax, semantics, and sociolinguistics. So let's see what we've got today. We have talked about aspiration, but you will see why, like what I'm going to do. I told you the word tar. So how do you pronounce? Do you aspirate the voiceless plosive? So as a learner of English, coming from a language in which the plosives are not aspirated. So your first language could be Spanish, French, Portuguese, or any similar language in which the voiceless plosives are not aspirated. So now you are going to speak a language. You're kind of traveling, immigrating into a new mindset. You need to integrate. Like you can choose not to integrate, but if you choose to integrate into the language, you need to know when to aspirate. So we tried to figure out how this aspiration thing works. We figured out that in English, voiceless plosives becomes aspirated. It happens initially followed by a vowel, which is a stress. So this is what we know so far from the examples from the previous video. Uh, our examples included words like Now, I want to introduce more examples that would force us to modify the rule. So it would force us to fine tune this rule so that we can learn all the instances in which the voiceless plosives in English are aspirated. And I promise the, the rule that we have at the end of this video is comprehensive. So, as we did before, I'm going to give you an example of a word, cry. Now we're going to go to our dictionary, then we're going to listen to it. Cry. Cry. Or listen to this. Practice. Practice. So, you see, do you see now I created this dot underneath this? Practice. So this R becomes voiceless because of the previous voiceless plosive. So it's a case of progressive assimilation because P is voiceless. R is not voiceless. Let me show you. This is R. It's here. It's alveolar and it's on the right of the cell. So it's voiced, but it becomes voiceless in this context when it's preceded by pa, okay? So this one, it's an approximant, right? Uh, it's an um, approximant, you have lateral approximant, you have approximant, and approximant means central approximant. But when it's central approximant, you don't usually say it, but it would be okay if you say it's a central approximant. But if it's a lateral approximant, you, you have to specify. This is a central approximant, which is voiced, but it becomes voiceless when it's preceded by a voiceless plosive, or it could be a voiceless uh, fricative. So, but what is the point here? This narrow transcription can become narrower because this P is aspirated. Listen to this. Practice. Do you hear the puff? Practice. Practice. Now let's hear this. Puff. Puff. So I can hear as much puff with pot, which is based on our previous rule. So if you listen carefully, Practice. you hear as much aspiration in practice as you, as you hear in pot. So it's not practice, it's practice. 
Let me give you another example. Try, try. Try. The word plot. 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 Clock. 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 We don't have examples of tell in English. So we have try, but we don't have try because that con cluster doesn't happen in English. So it only in the case of la, it only applies to ka and pa. So the rule is saying that voice explosives become aspirated whenever they happen in syllable initially, followed by a vowel or r or la. So in other words, when they're followed by a central or lateral approximate, the voicing is not important because there's only one version of these. Okay, how do you think we can simplify these three conditions? What is the way to simplify? Because look, it always syllable initial and it's followed by one of them. So we have to find something common between vowels and uh, approximates, whether central or lateral. Okay, now you have to see if there is any natural class of sounds which includes vowels as well as liquids. And surprise, there is such a class. It's called sonorant. Okay, so what the definition of sonorant sonorants consists of nasals taps flaps trills approximants and vowels and for our purposes these two are sonorants right so i can simply go and modify this i can say sonorant so whenever you have a voiceless plosive in the beginning of a syllable followed by a sonorant this could be either approximants or vowels then you need to aspirate it look so you have a voiceless plosive which occurs here which is syllable initial followed by a consonant and then it's stressed the syllable is a stress and it's followed by sonorant <laughs> so now i'm going to give you some words and you have to tell me like I would expect you to pronounce them accurately okay so you need to figure out by yourself based on this rule whether you need to aspirate it or not okay how about the word plosive okay but what about fresh or what about fish so I can say it becomes voiceless, but is there aspiration for f? You're talking about voiceless plosives and f is a voiceless fricative. So it's not relevant here, nor is fish. Uh, what about, what about this? Crime. Crime. Thanks for your time and attention and see you again soon.